It's a place called The Shack. Paul Young says he spent most of his life there. Today, he's far from it, traveling the globe, sharing his incredible story, one written in the pages of his word of mouth bestseller. Years after its release, The Shack continues to occupy the top tier of the New York Times bestseller list. But what it's best known for is provoking a lot of debate and tears. It's a mystery suspense wrapped in a what if. You know, the what if is, what if there is a God who actually is involved in the details of our lives? What if there's a God who is good all the time? And uh, Mackenzie, the main character, um, lives in Oregon, where I'm living now. And, uh, and you know, Mackenzie's me. And uh, so it's, he has children, they go camping, they have a huge loss, he experiences a huge loss that centers around a shack way out in the wilderness uh, in Oregon. And uh, four years later, he gets invited through a mysterious note that is written in such a way that it could be from the perpetrator, it could be from uh, just a bad joke, or actually it could even be from God inviting him back to the place of his pain, the shack. The truth of the shack is stranger than the fiction on its pages. That's because it was a story only intended for Young's six kids. Today, it sold more than 10 million copies. Not bad for a book that tackles the Trinity. Well, what makes you write a book about the Trinity? I mean, what were you thinking when you decided to write this book? Just well, you got to remember, I'm writing it for my six children, and they love me. So, you know, <laughs> by the time they're done reading, regardless of how it came out, they would gonna, they're going to love me anyway. And uh, um, I wasn't trying to tackle the Trinity. I was, I was more trying to deal with the character and nature of God as it relates to us in our process of, of healing. And um, um, so I'm wrapping a lot of the questions that I had uh, growing up as a religious kid, you know, missionary kid, preacher's kid, and uh, wrapping those inside of a story. Um, so the Trinity was just, it just made sense because for me the relational reality of the Trinity is central to the character and nature of God. But this idea of invitation, that was one thing that intrigued me. It wasn't that he went and sought out the shack. He gets this invitation to yeah. go there. See, to me, that's incarnation. That's, that is how God relates to us. You know, uh, according to Romans, no one has even sought for God. Any, any movement on our behalf toward God is because there's been an invitation. You know, God is, comes to us. That's the story of Jesus becoming incarnate. And that's what's different in religion. Religion is you've got to go find God and hear all the rules or the steps to get there and to win his approval and his affection. That's religion. And uh, the reality of a relationship with God is God comes and finds us, knowing how lost we are. That's Jesus saying, you know, I am uh, the good shepherd. I'll leave the 99 to go find the one. Your story has a lot of pain in it. It does. I think a lot of people, I, I get 50, I have 50, 60,000 emails of people sharing their stories. And uh, there's a lot of great sadness in this world. You know, and every human being is unique. And you can put 10 children in front of the same uh, evil, and you'll have 10 lives go 10 different directions, how they deal with it. And uh, for me, you know, great sadness had to do with my relationship with my dad, my disconnect from both my mom and my dad sexual abuse that happened as a child growing up in a different culture and then in missionary boarding school it continued and the break from one world being dropped into another one. So, you know, all of those things are, are part of, uh, are elements of what can hurt a human being. But people have great sadnesses in their, in their lives and I think that's part of the reason the book has, has connected as well as it has. The Shack has its share of critics. Some call it false doctrine. Others call it dangerous. Young says it's his story, a parable of the long journey toward healing, one that resonates with many. As you're writing this book and you're creating these characters, where do these characters come from? I think you know where I'm yeah. going with oh, this. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> um, the character, I, I use imagery that's a little outside the box, and uh, it's gotten me into some little bit of hot water controversy, whatever which is a good thing. I love the controversy. I think it's healthy. I think it's sometimes it's the only way that people stuck inside religious paradigms are ever going to have a conversation is to get mad. You know, as far as I'm concerned, Jesus is still healing people on the Sabbath. And uh, so, um, so the characters are rooted in my own history in some senses. I'm multicultural. I grew up overseas. 
I grew up uh, in a black community uh, in the highlands of New Guinea and in fact didn't even really understand that I was white till I went to boarding school when I was six and it was a huge disappointment. <laughs> 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 I, I wanted the guy in trouble to be sort of a, you know, a middle 50s, uh, kind of short, balding, little overweight white guy, you know. <laughs> oh, it looks a lot like me. But, and I wanted the healing to come from the nature and character of God that was much more expansive than the box that he had put God in. And um, imagery, even in scripture, is never intended to define God. And, mm -hmm. and we don't remember that. Mm -hmm. uh, but God is imaged as a mother hen who covers the chicks, right? Doesn't mean God has feathers. It, it's an image to help us understand the nature and heart and character and person of who God is. Well, same with Father. God is not male or female. God is spirit. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we've taken our experience as a father, for example, and plastered it upon the face of God rather than look at the relationship that exists between God the Father and the Son, Jesus, and begin to see, okay, we got a disconnect here. You know, and uh, I had a difficult relationship with my father, um, reflected in the book, and, uh, and I tell people that, you know, it took me 50 years to wipe the face of my father off the face of God. And uh, so I use imagery that's outside the box, and, but it's, uh, it's very defensible in terms of orthodoxy. You know, there's lots of feminine language for God. The Holy Spirit's almost always referred in the Old Testament in feminine pronouns, and, and so it's, you know, God's not male or female. So you weren't setting out to write a theological treatise on the nature of God. Um, my intent was, was not to be trying to say, okay, this is Theology 101, systematic theology. It's, it's not that. I wanted a big picture is what I wanted. You know, I grew up in the church and you got a piece of the puzzle every week, you know, and you put it in your puzzle drawer because you didn't know how they fit and you didn't know what mm -hmm. the picture was. Mm -hmm. So for my kids, I'm saying, I, I want... I want the box top as, as big a picture as I can get. And the picture Young paints has captivated readers around the world. Already translated in 34 languages, the shack has struck a nerve, or better or worse. Plans for a film are already in the works. No doubt it will be a tearjerker.